Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about treatment space. A lot of calls from people and room forms and just general inquiries and people, they just don't understand what it takes to treat low frequency problems in a room. Most don't really understand middle and high frequency treatment. So I thought we, we've done this a few times before, but I'm going to try a different tact here. See if this helps everybody uh, understand, you know, the bare minimum requirements that we're up against here. So what do we have for treatment? We have absorption, diffusion, barrier. There's really three kinds of treatment because barrier is noise transmission. You can have the best treated room in the world, but if it's too noisy, what good is it? So there's really three types of treatment, you know, that we have to look at. So We have to use absorption and diffusion to manage the sound inside the room. That's our goal. Keep the noise out, manage the sound inside, okay? Now, in order to do that, we gotta break absorption up into the two parts, low frequency, mids and highs. If we just split it, let those break points, we'll be good. Now, we're gonna manage low frequency energy we're going to need 12 to 16 inches of depth on the product. So most of these low frequency absorption technologies go against the wall. If they go against the wall, you're going to lose 12 to 16. 12 will get you down to 40 hertz. 16 will get you down to 30. We can actually get you to 30 in 12 too. We don't put the foam on the face, but there's all kinds of ways to do this. But I want to give you an idea of the general space commitments that you're up against. Because the minute I say these numbers to people on the phone, they go, oh my God, my room's going to get so small. Well, that's the trade-off, right? Unfortunately, in these small rooms, in order to make them sound larger, we have to physically make them smaller by giving up space for treatment. It's a catch-22, but that's just the way the physics works out these days come up with some new laws, then we can hopefully change things. But right now we gotta work with what we got. Can be built into the walls, our CAW system on a new build allows you to put it in the wall. So at that point, you can make the room a little bit larger to accommodate for that 12 inches of loss. There's things we can do at the, at the build stage. And we have two kinds of clients, ones that are building new rooms and, and ones that are retrofitting existing. So if they're retrofitting, it's, it's the freestanding units that they'll use. If they're building, obviously they're gonna use our CAWs. So middle and high frequency management doesn't take as much space, but it still takes space, two inches to eight inches, depending on what you're doing, depending on the usage. So you have to keep these distances in, in mind. 12, 16, low frequency, two to eight for mids and highs. So what do we look at this all together? So you got the barrier on the outside. There's really three walls in one. We have the barrier on the outside, then we have climate control, ETU retention, and then here we have the treatment. So noise, keeping the room warm and cold, absorption, diffusion. There's three walls that we have to be concerned about. So we can overlap sometimes. We can make the barrier and um, these two work together. There's a lot we can do, but the treatment side of it, we can't do much. And that's where you got to give up this 12 inches on the low frequency. And we don't want to have too much of a noise issue. If we do, we'll fix it. But as a general rule, we found barriers cost four to five times as much as treatment. So this wall here for noise, it costs four to five times what it costs to treat on the inside on a new build. So we want to make sure we don't have any serious noise issues. And then what do we got? Climate thickness can vary, obviously, from the region of the country that you're in, the R value of the insulation and all that stuff. So it can get you know, there'd be a lot, three feet sometimes, if you're really serious about it. So depending on your noise, you know, the barrier could be six to eight inches just, just for the barrier. So treatment space, keep it in mind, whether you're building a new room or you're treating an existing room, 
Physics is physics. It's the law. You know, everything else is a suggestion. So what we have to do is allow for that treatment, allow for that space requirement, because it's definitely worth the trade-off in the improved sound quality. Treatment space. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple of days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.